now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. The family of a missing father and son in Calhoun County are still hoping they can be found as volunteers continue the search. And jury selection began Monday in Delaware in the historic federal gun trial against Hunter Biden. The president saying he won't comment but still supports his son. Pro-Palestinian protesters gathered Monday night at the University of Pittsburgh, marking the second night of protest at the campus. And there's a couple showers and thunderstorms out there, but it looks like they're exiting the crossroads because coming our way is the heat. We will take a look at that in the weather coming up. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the fourth day of June of Junio 2024. Oh, fourth day of summer. Yeah, fourth day of meteorological summer. Meteorological summer, But yes. the first day of summer is my birthday. Oh, is that right? That's cool. <laughs> I need to stop mentioning it. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, the time is now 632 on our Tuesday morning, and it's shopping cart day. Always be sure to return the shopping cart wherever it belongs. Yes, definitely. It's a polite thing to do. Yes, absolutely. And if you are going to go shopping out there today, make sure to drink plenty of water because we got a hot day coming our way today. In fact, if you are tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Victoria. It's already plenty warm and plenty humid out there, just like it has been for the last four weeks. Right now, we are sitting at 81 degrees, but that humidity is sitting at 94%. That's because your dew point is two degrees off, sitting at 79. That is plenty wet, let me tell y'all. But right now, like I said, we did have a couple showers and thunderstorms out there, very weak thunderstorms, I might add. So nothing to worry about, no damage or anything like that. But that is now exiting the crossroads, probably maybe even coming into Wharton or something or something like that in the next five, 10 minutes or so. But nothing like nothing else coming our way today, I don't think. But what is coming our way today is the heat and that is really coming our way this weekend. We're going to look at that just a second because we do have heat advisories issued by the National Weather Service and that's going to go today, uh, to go until today, until 8 p.m. tonight, that is. But you can see a couple of us are not out of that or out of that out of the boxes, but we do have very hot temperatures to accompany that. So I do not, I'm not surprised they've issued those heat advisories because here in Victoria, I'm thinking right around 93, 94 this afternoon. While out west, y'all could maybe see the uh, low 100s possibly, but we could all be seeing the 100s come this weekend. But all of us could be seeing uh, the heat in the seas, the feels like temperatures be above 100 for today. Look out west, they could feel like 113 degrees out there today. But the good news is there is going to be a slight, slight breeze in the background gusting up to about 30 miles an hour. Going to bring just a tiny bit of heat relief because it's going to be plenty sunny and that's going to stick around all week long. And we're going to take a look at all that more though in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The family of a missing father and son in Calhoun County are still hoping they can be found. 50-year-old Benedicto Jaramillo and his son, 16-year-old Angel Jaramillo, left Magnolia Beach Saturday morning to go shrimping. The 40-foot shrimping vessel they were, caps they were on capsized in a storm. After 21 hours of searching, the Coast Guard suspended the search for the father and son early Sunday morning. The Port Lavaca Wave reports family members are still searching Lavaca Bay. Helping with the search are volunteers from Hunter Hadley's Quest, a group founded after a boating accident caused the death of Hunter Hadley in January of 2023. The Victoria City Council will meet this evening at 5 p.m. in Council Chambers. On the agenda is the approval of a funding agreement with the Victoria Electric Cooperative for an LED street light conversion project. Also on the agenda is the approval of the purchase of a disinfection system at Water Pump Station 3. And also on the agenda is an amendment to a variance in the section 1410B of the City Code for Property to allow the sale of alcohol at 2804 North Laurent Street. They meet at 107 West Wanland Street. Claudia Scheinenbaum has made history as the first woman to be elected as president of Mexico. The former Mexico City mayor led with 58% of the vote. The count was released by the National Electoral Institute and it says her victory ensures another six years in power for the political party Morena. Founded 13 years ago by President Andres Manuel López Obrador. Her top rival, Xochitl Galvez, a pro-business tech entrepreneur with indigenous origins, finished in second place with around 27% of the votes. 
Summer is more than two weeks away, but millions of Americans are already feeling the heat. A potentially historic heat wave is about to tighten its grip as wildfires break out in the West. Triple digit temperatures this early in the season comes as a warning about your electric bills this summer. This morning, hundreds of firefighters are on the front lines battling wildfires in California ahead of what could be a record breaking early season heat wave for the West. Crews in San Francisco's East Bay battling this fire that broke out yesterday. And not far away, the Corral fire burning more than 20 square miles. Travis Curtis's parents were among those forced to flee. They lost everything. They left with the clothes on their back. And so. Uh, and came home to nothing. Came home to nothing. Usually, if we see the more intense fire activity, in July, August, September, so uh, we just want everybody to be prepared. Experts warn fire seasons are starting earlier and they're lasting longer. Now we have that potential heat wave coming midweek, which is just going to dry everything out even further. Six states are now bracing for a blistering heat wave. Parts of California, Arizona, and Nevada could see temperatures top 110 this week. Nationwide, NOAA predicts a 61% chance of this summer being the hottest on record. And that heat, along with additional factors this year, mean it will cost more to cool your home. A new forecast predicts cooling costs will hit a 10-year high this summer. These states are expected to see higher cooling bills. Those in the South Atlantic are expected to pay 7% more than last year. And people from Kentucky to Alabama could be paying bills more than 10% higher. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Jury selection began Monday in Delaware in the historic federal gun trial against Hunter Biden. The son of the president is accused of lying about being an active drug user on a government form to obtain a firearm. He's pled not guilty to three counts tied to the possession of a gun while using narcotics. Trump nominated U.S. District Judge Mary Ellen Noriega said she plans on calling potential jurors in groups of 50 until they're able to find 12 people who say they can be impartial when it comes to the president's son. The president said in a statement Monday while he won't comment on the cases against his son, he loves and supports him. Pro-Palestinian protesters gathered Monday night at the University of Pittsburgh. Protesters reportedly breached a fence at the Cathedral of Learning on the campus. Multiple officers were called in for urgent support as the protests gained momentum. Monday marked the second night of protest at the university where an encampment has been reestablished on campus. Protesters are calling for the University of Pittsburgh to sever any ties with Israel or companies promoting the Israel-Hamas war. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now 6.39 on our Tuesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. FEMA is preparing to help residents in Calhoun County after severe weather brought damage to the area. President Biden is expected to announce a new immigration policy that would limit the number of asylum seekers allowed to cross into the U.S. every day. I'm Christiane Cordero with the latest coming up. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your marine forecast, followed by your weather and health forecast. And later on sunrise, we'll take another look at that real heat that's coming our way this weekend.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all tuning in with us this morning, look alive in Quero, and look at that. As the sun's coming up, you can see plenty cloudy out there this morning, but it will not be like that this afternoon. Right now, it's already plenty warm, 82 degrees, and plenty humid as well, sitting at about 88% right now. Not enough for fog, but you will definitely notice it is plenty humid out there when your glasses or something like that fog up like instantly. But not too bad of a day to go fishing. Actually, not the greatest actually, because it's going to be a little bit windy out there, gusting up to about 30 knots, and that equates to about 35 miles an hour. And that's going to be along the coast. Inland area is going to see gusts up to 30 miles an hour, but choppy waters with the wind out there, and the water still very warm at 87 degrees. But with a little bit breezy out there, grass pollen is going to be high. Air quality is also going to be a little bit unhealthy. So if you're sensitive to that, please make sure to maybe stay inside for today. But UV index is going to be very high in the late afternoon when the sun comes out. And that sun is here to stay this week, getting very hot this weekend. And we're going to take a look at that in just a few more moments. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Today, President Biden is expected to announce a new plan on border security. His sources say his new executive order would effectively limit the number of migrants allowed to cross into the country each day. Republican oppositionists are already criticizing the president's timing. Legal challenges are expected, to, are expected following the new order. This morning, President Biden is expected to announce a new immigration policy similar to the bipartisan deal that has been stuck in congressional gridlock. Sources say the executive order would set a limit of 2,500 daily migrant encounters at U.S. ports of entry before turning asylum seekers away. The move would have an immediate effect since migrant crossings right now average 3,500 per day. But Biden faces criticism on the timing of this executive action five months ahead of the presidential election. Some Democrats accuse the administration of giving into Republican pressure, and some Republicans call it too little, too late. This is a very desperate man um, trying to uh, divert, I guess, um, what is in my mind an irredeemable problem, and that is a, that he created a crisis at the border. Congressional Republicans at the direction of former President Donald Trump have repeatedly blocked a bipartisan border security deal endorsed by the Border Patrol Union. And a former Trump-era immigration executive order is still held up in the courts. Biden administration officials expect a similar fate. As the ACLU says, quote, any executive order that shuts off asylum would raise substantial legal problems. The president, keenly aware that immigration is a top issue for voters, has been weighing on how he can act alone, telling Univision in there's April. No, there's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some have suggested I should just go ahead and try it. And if I get shut down by the court, I get shut down by the court. A source tells ABC News the executive order will include an exception for children. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can skin the QR code right there on your screen to take part. We ask you, do you agree with Biden's executive order that would limit the amount of border crossings? Okay, let's take a look. 77% of you say yes, and 23% of you say no. Thank you for taking part in today's viewer poll. FEMA is preparing to help residents in Calhoun County after severe weather brought damage to the area. They opened up an office inside the Port Lavaca Library on Mahan Street. And they encourage anyone impacted by the severe weather to come in and apply for disaster benefits. Latanya Hopes with FEMA says that many more funding options have been added and encourages everyone to apply. Even if you think you will not qualify, you just might. And we're here to help. We've rolled up our sleeves. And these wonderful people in here, they've had tons of training on being respectful, on being honest, on being patient, and being compassionate towards the people that are walking in the door. The Port Lavaca FEMA office is inside the Port Lavaca Library at 200 Mayhan Street. The office is open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. If you'd like to apply for help, be sure to bring a photo ID and any pictures of the damage or loss you experienced during the storms. The time is now 645 on our Tuesday morning. Still to come, if your summer plans include a flight, listen up before you opt in for that complimentary glass of wine. All right, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Cami! Happy 17th birthday, Cami! You are such an inspiration to us all. May your day be filled with love and happiness from the Castellano family. Happy birthday, Cami! And happy birthday to Michael Lee. Happy 25th birthday, Michael. We love you and we all hope you have a great day today.
And Oscar-winning actress Angelina Jolie with a birthday today. She's 49. Happy birthday, Angelina. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com. Click on More and Under Home, you'll see KVU to submit your birthday. Okay, the time is now 6.46 on our Tuesday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. That's right. Happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, Crossroads. What I've been saying all morning is that heat, it's coming our way. So make sure to get ready for it. Make sure to start getting hydrated because today, not, not hot yet, but today is still a little very warm. Get up to about 94 here in Victoria, but out west right along the Rio Grande, they're going to be in the mid to upper hundreds for today. But don't get not used to that because that could be coming our way very soon. In fact, look at your next five days here. You can see our average high is sitting at 91 this time of the year. We every day we're above that high and on Sunday. Yes, here in Victoria, we could almost hit 100 degrees, but out west they could see maybe the mid to upper hundreds. And I'm talking like Card City and Beeville. But you're probably wondering where is all this heat coming from? And it's coming from what we call the Dome of Doom. It's what we call that in the summertime. So that basically it's upper level high pressure and that's the sinking air that basically forces all the hot air along the surface to stay there. But look there is a big upper level low in the northeast that could bring us maybe a little bit of a cool down on Monday, maybe even showers as well. But we're going to take a look at all that and more though in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. 
Thank you, Parker. If you have summer vacation plans that include a flight, listen up before you opt in for that complimentary glass of wine. Researchers are better understanding the relationship between flights, sleep, and alcohol. The verdict is don't drink alcohol on airplanes. A study published in the journal Thorax found drinking alcohol on a plane combined with sleeping causes heart strain. That's because air pressure and oxygen levels in flight are lower than typical conditions on Earth. Combine that with alcohol consumption and sleep and you can get an intensified drop in oxygen saturation in your blood. Study authors say the best way to stay hydrated is to drink water. A mortician in Nebraska is getting ready to prepare or was getting ready to prepare a deceased woman's remains when she was shocked to find the body lying on the table was still breathing. Police say a 74-year-old woman was pronounced dead at a nursing home. Her doctor signed a death certificate and sent her to a mortuary. An employee at the mortuary noticed she was breathing and called authorities. The woman was transported to the hospital. Police say they do not suspect any criminal wrongdoing. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. Police in Michigan are investigating after three people vandalized a law firm. Police in Michigan are investigating after three people vandalized the law firm on Monday. The Southfield Police Department received calls shortly after 8 a.m. about vandalism at the Goodman Acker Law Firm. Officers checked surveillance video and learned that four people approached the building around 1.30 a.m. The video showed one person acting as a lookout 
while the other three vandalized the building. An obscenity toward one of the lawyers was also spray painted on the structure. He serves as a regent for the University of Michigan. At a press conference, he said the graffiti was, quote, done as a message to scare Jewish people. A new, a new Utah lawsuit claims TikTok, a TikTok feature puts children at risk. TikTok Live allows users to post live videos to the platform where they can interact with viewers and respond to comments in real time. Only users over the age of 18 can host a live stream and you must meet certain follower count as well. A lawsuit filed by Utah's Attorney General claims TikTok Live operates like a quote virtual strip club where children may be encouraged by adults to engage in illicit acts on camera in exchange for payments from other users. It claims TikTok has insufficient age verification and enforcement measures to ensure the app is being used safely. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin is in Cambodia today. The short visit is aimed at reversing some of the gains China has made in the country amid increasing concerns about Beijing's growing president presence at a key Cambodian naval base. It is Secretary Austin's first visit to Cambodia since Hun Manet became prime minister last year. Cambodia's decision to allow China to develop Reem naval base located at a key waterway on the coast of the Gulf of Thailand has Washington worried it will give Beijing a new outpost near the contested South China Sea, most of which is claimed by China. Adding to U.S. concerns, China sent two warships to Cambodia and East Timor last month on a tour that will last to mid-June. Victoria ISD board members will hold a special meeting tomorrow to review proposals for a search firm as it looks like as it looks for the new superintendent. They will select a firm they want to meet with or several firms at a June 10th board meeting. The meeting tomorrow is at 3:30 at 102 Profit Drive. And just a reminder, there is going to be a road closure in Victoria County Precinct 1. McCoy Road between Highway 185 and Phillip Road will be closed for bridge repairs. That closure will take place today and tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Twelve years ago, a Texas law introduced tax breaks for maintaining bees on at least five acres. Today, some people continue to take up beekeeping while others are opting to hire professionals. Read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, Crossroads Today. Dot com. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And we do have time for a final check of our cloudy sunrise with First Horn Storm Team Meteorologist Parker Cox. Parker, it is quite overcast. Yes, it is pretty cloudy out this morning. In fact, thank you all for tuning in with us this morning. You're looking live in Port Lavaca. All those clouds out there are actually leftover remnants from the showers that just swept through our area. Although it is not raining anymore, but it is right now warm 84 degrees out there for your summertime low temperature. 81 degree dew point though, making it quite humid out there. But like I said, there were a couple showers out there this morning and right now it's pretty much dissipated just west southwest of Wharton. But looking at your cloud cover, you can see right where the rain was. It's just down there, but coming behind it is what's going to come our way and that is sunny skies. In fact, going into this afternoon, we're going to have pretty generally sunny skies. Also a little bit breezy as well with your gust up to about 30 miles an hour at times. But here in Victoria, we're going to be pretty warm today, getting up to about 94. Out west in Quero, getting up to about 98. And in Port Lavaca, getting up to about 93 for today. But we've got some real heat coming our way this weekend. Some of us maybe even the mid to upper hundreds. Is it going to get drier by Thursday? Yes, it's actually going to be humid today and tomorrow, and then we're going to get a little slight north wind. It's going to dry us off just a little bit. Nice. Well, thank you, Parker, and of thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and remember, follow us on our YouTube channel and join Karina.